One rock and roll band, perhaps more than any other, expressed the energy and freedom of the 1960s. Today, the group still expresses the same energy and freedom. They're grateful because they're timeless. They're timeless because they're dead. Richard Threlkeld reports. They've only made one hit record. They don't make many music videos, and they're sneaking up on middle age. But 26 years after they started, the Grateful Dead are still on tour and almost always sold out. No different now than back in the 60s. Every concert is still a happening. People get fanatic about the Grateful Dead. All sorts of people. Well, she Mom came to have fun today, and she's going to have fun tonight. She may dance. She might be, my mom might I'd dance like at a Grateful Dead concert. Yeah, I like that. True followers of the Grateful Dead are known as Deadheads. The last year I saw close to 40 shows. By day, Dan Hubert's a lawyer in New York who started his own law practice so he could remain a deadhead by night. Two hours ago, I was in the criminal court building finishing up the last of my cases for the day. And then what happened? Well, this job I got. What's so great about the Grateful Dead? So everybody's concentrating on the music, and there's, there's a sense that this is happening at this moment and will never happen again. I think the appeal is that, that it's real, and that we, too, make mistakes up there right in front of everybody. God and everybody, we go out there and we drop them, you know? We, I call them train wrecks. We, we have some real good derailments. And even after 26 years, the Grateful Dead figure they're not half finished. I'd love to be doing this in another 10 or 20 years or another 30 years. I'd love to do this until the end of my days, and I hope that lasts for a long time. Richard Threlkeld, CBS News, New York. Yes, we're going back to that shack way across the railroad track. Well, here among the grateful living, it's time to say that Bob Schieffer will have the news for you tomorrow. Connie Chung on Sunday. Dan Rather for the CBS Evening News. I'll see you Monday. Good night. In over 25 years, The Grateful Dead has turned out just one top 10 hit. But on the road, they are definitely number one, making more money from concerts than any other band. And tonight, The Dead will play the last of nine sold-out concerts at New York's Madison Square Garden. Richard Threlkeld has a look at what keeps their fans, The Deadheads, coming back year after year. At a Grateful Dead concert, the band is only the half of it. This is the other half, the audience the first timers it's gonna be a cool time yeah yeah it's my first dead show i'm here with some friends who have done it before and yeah. the faithful i've said i've seen at least 20 20 20 something shows since september i've been seeing them since 81. i've seen them about 100 times caught uh, two in ohio and two here and i'm gonna go to the one tonight too It's the audience that has kept the Grateful Dead together for 26 years, kept it popular. Deadheads, they are called. But, uh, a typical deadhead likes a little adventure in his music and probably in his life as well. You can be a lawyer or a doctor. When you come here, you put on your tie-dye, the uniform of the day, and you're just anybody. I had two cases ready to go to trial. The district attorney wasn't ready for trial on both, so I didn't have to do that. I'm having a great day. What kind of deck are you using? That, the Sony, you know, the D3. They even let you tape their music. This band doesn't make a lot of records or music videos. It doesn't need to. With the Grateful Dead, the playing's the thing. We don't even know what we're going to do. 
So it makes it surprising for us and everybody else. It's a, that's what the Grateful Dead is all about. It tries to reinvent itself each night. We don't approach the uh, given song the same, the same way ever. Didn't you say your name was Rambling Road Rose? Ramble on, baby. Settle down easy. This week here, next week somewhere else, the Grateful Dead are a sort of movable feast of sight and sound, the wandering minstrels of rock and roll. Yeah, our tradition goes back through the jazz traditions, the, the big band traditions, and stuff like that. It's like the stadiums are juke joints, and you know, they're the itinerant blues men coming to town, playing their gig, packing up, going to the next town. It's, it's a very wonderful, old-fashioned thing. Yeah, it's the people, it's the music, it's everything put together, but I mean, as long as you're a part of it in some way, you're gonna be happy. <laughs> Grateful Dead has already made a generation of people happy. And there are whole generations of deadheads yet unborn. Richard Threlkeld in New York for CBS This Morning. <laughs> here's, here's my question. Yes. Because you know, you've been to the, yeah. seen them and everything else. What what does it take to qualify as a dead dead, or who might qualify? Well, as here you go. I was at a party once with Walter Cronkite and mm -hmm. his wife Betsy, and she comes over and she says, "We're getting older. We want to experience everything. We want to go to a, a a hard rock concert." <laughs> so we went to see the Grateful Dead, and they're they're like folk music. Went backstage and met the band. Cut ahead six months. Walter's in London giving a speech. Uh -huh. He's at a new hotel he's never stayed at. He comes in, and the whole lobby is full of what she thought were gypsies, people right. with uh, scarves on their head. <laughs> And all of a sudden they hear, Walter! It's Jerry Garcia, the Grateful Dead. <laughs> There's Walter. Jerry! Walter! So they're hugging in the lobby. So Walter Cronkite Somehow, is a deadhead. I can't picture Walter in the front row with his microphone making a bootleg tape no, of a dead, dead, dead concert. <laughs> but he's a dancer. He is a dancer. There you go. <laughs> Great story. It's five before the hour. We'll be right back. <laughs> this portion of CBS.